Hey everybody, Home Slice Henry here, and in today's video we will take a look at the brand new Love Cup in Pokemon Go Battle League. This cup does take place in the Great League, and only pink and red Pokemon are allowed. And I will include a, a link to the list of the allowed Pokemon in the description of the video. When I saw the list of allowed Pokemon, to be honest, I saw this was going to be a charm heavy meta. I really don't like losing to Charmers, so I decided to make a triple anti-Charm team to make sure that I don't lose to any Charmers. And so let's hop in and take a look at how the team did. The team does consist of Vileplume, Talonflame, and Charizard. Picking up a neutral lead here versus Metacham, so we do want to get some Razor Leaf damage in and try and catch the charge move onto Talonflame, which we are able to do. This is fantastic because Talonflame can tank that Ice Punch, and we bait out an Octillery. Octillery, of course, has access to Octazooka, which will be doing massive super effective damage. So we have to let this go. That actually doesn't take us out and we're able to get to the Brave Bird. Brave Bird should be doing quite a bit of damage to this Octillery and it lands. Unfortunately, Octillery is able to farm down due to the debuff. We come back in with Vileplume to take out the Octillery, but now our Vileplume has a significant energy advantage over this Metacham. And we're able to get to the Sludge Bomb, and this should be able to pressure a shield off of the Metacham, which it does. I did try and switch, unfortunately it was a CMP tie. I'm gonna shield up the Ice Punch and go into Charizard. They do have a Scallopede, so double fire. They only have one answer to fire, so the second fire type is going to absolutely obliterate the Scallopede. We do get the shield. At this point, I'm thinking their Win Con is baiting, so I let it go. It's just the X Scissor, we're fine. And now I am able to farm all the way down and able to go for the Dragon Claw. As you can see, a little bit of lag there, but able to go for the Dragon Claw, and Dragon Claw is going to plus one Fire Spin, take out the Metacham and give us the game. So good game to my opponent there. And we're hopping into the next match, Vileplume into another Metacham. As you can see, Metacham was a rather common choice today, especially in the lead because it has a lot of neutral matchups. Again, we're able to catch onto Talonflame, and this time it's a power up punch, so even better. They're actually going to stay in. This is a little worrisome because since they did a power up punch, now I really have to fear those psychics. They do go for the psychic. I am going to shield that up. I'm going to go for the flame charge here. Flame charge should provide a decent amount of pressure, and we are able to get a shield. And from here, I should just be able to shield once and then farm all the way down. So I am going to shield and I am, ex oh, they bait with a power up punch and they actually switch out into a charmer. So this is very possibly a double charm team. This is the exact team that I built my team to destroy. And now we're in a really good position. Shields are down. We can come in with the Charizard and Charizard has a really good matchup when shields are down versus charmers. Going straight for the blast burn that does massive damage. The Metacham is not at a move. We're able to farm that down too. And my opponent concedes they did not want to bring in their Clefable to get Blast Burned. Hopping into the next match, Vileplume into Magcargo. This is tough. Magcargo actually has Rock Throw as its fast move. So I really don't want to safe swap out of here. I actually just need to win this lead matchup because both my back Pokemon take double super effective damage from Rock. I am going to shield up the Stone Edge and we're over farming here and I do go for the Sludge Bomb. Sludge Bomb would be taking it out. I just don't wanna to have to use the second shield. Unfortunately, that does take us out. And oof, look how much damage that does to Talonflame. And they bring out an Electrode. This is going to be a tough game. However, we only have one shield left apiece. So this makes this game easier. And the fact that they let that go is absolutely huge. I'm in an okay spot here where I can now shield up this foul play. And as you can see, Due to the flame charge buff, I'm able to farm down, and now we're able to go for another buffed flame charge, and that gets the shield on Scallopede. We're able to bring in our fire spin Charizard, and so even though they had two flyer counters, and we had two flyers, we are able to take the win. So a good game to my opponent there. All right, and we're hopping into the next match here. As you can see, my Elo has fallen. I'm in the 2800s, and we pick up a Charm lead. All three Pokemon do have positive matchups versus Charm. They safe swap into a Crustle. I cannot leave this matchup. Crustle does double super effective damage to both my back Pokemon. So basically what I need to do here is try and do as much damage as I can. I'm going straight for the Sludge Bomb in the hope that they won't shield. 
and they don't. Okay, the crustal's out of the way. This is big. They bring in Scallopede, and I bring out my Talon Flame. And at this point, their one fire counter is dead, and I can even let this Sludge Bomb go as I do survive it. And at this point, Charizard is going to be able to close endgame. I'm going to put off the Flame Charge to get the shield. They're going to be able to farm me down. And now I have Charizard in an even shield scenario versus a Charmer. And so long as at least one shield is down on the Charmer side, then Charizard is going to win that matchup. Going straight for the Blast Burn, they do shield and they see the writing on the wall and they concede the match. So a good game there. As you can see, this team is doing very well at its job, which is beating Charmers. Hopping to the next match, cross the lead. We cannot switch out of this. We have to stay in. Unfortunately, we cannot raise your leaf down before they get to two X scissors. So we're either going to have to double shield or take double super effective damage on one of our back Pokemon. We are going to shield that up, of course, and now we're going for the Sludge Bomb. We throw the Sludge Bomb here to try and avoid having to use a second shield. They, of course, mirror, so they can get that second move off. I'm actually going to let this go. I want a shield for in back, and I'm just going to have to take some damage. Oh my goodness, that does so much to Talonflame. And they bring out a Wigglytuff! Okay, so if Wigglytuff is their best fire answer, then they are so weak to fire in the back. Going for the Flame Charge. And we should be able to get to another Flame Charge here, which we are. This is going to be taking out that Wigglytuff. It does absolutely massive damage. Oh, sorry. Uh, it was one away, then we brought in the Charizard. And now there's Scolipede. And we're able to go straight for the Blast Burn. And this is going to be enough to take out the Scolipede. So a very good game to my opponent there. They were just double weak in the back to fire. Vileplume into Scolipede. This is a bad lead. We're going to safe swap into our Talonflame, and they're running Scolipede Double Charmer. And today they learned that they need to have an answer for fire types. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, they still had some play in that matchup because if they two shield, they can win back switch advantage. However, Charizard was going to be able to sweep end game. Another Metacham lead. I'm gonna, unfortunately not quite able to catch the move, so I am going to need to use a shield. And it's a power-up punch. This is really less than ideal. And now I'm coming with Talonflame, and I'm actually going to probably need to burn the second shield here, which is super unfortunate. This is really not a position I want to be in. I'm gonna go straight for the Flame Charge here in the hopes of boosting my attack. And they bring out a Scrafty, okay. We're okay here. We should be able to get a shield with this flame charge before Scrafty does take us out. Charge move coming through. This is going to be the foul play that is going to be very close to taking us out. And one more counter does the trick. At this point, I'm thinking if they brought in Scrafty to a fire type, they're probably weak to scrap. They're probably weak to fire in the back. So I do bring out my Vile Plume to soak their energy and to hopefully get their last shield. I'm able to do it, and now I come in with Charizard. They're not switching out, so again, this is a dead giveaway, and it's a Charmer in back. Here I'm going to farm all the way up to two Blast Burns. The first one is going to be enough to take out the Wigglytuff after one more Fire Spin, and the second one is going to be enough to take out the Scrafty. So here you can see the power of Charizard as a closer. Fire Spin does quite a bit of damage, and Blast Burn hits so incredibly hard. All right, and we're hopping into the next match here, leading into a Heatmore. This is a terrible lead, and honestly, this is a bit of a core breaker for the team. Heatmore has access to Thunder Punch, which does do super effective damage to my back two Pokemon. Thunder Punch does so much, oh my goodness. And now we're going straight for the Flame Charge. Flame Charge is going to be resisted, so, and here, I make a call and it's power up punch. So huge call. Now I'm able to get a shield advantage by choosing not to shield the power up punch. I had a feeling with that little health, he was gonna go for the power up punch. This one I do need to shield up. A boosted thunder punch will be doing absolutely massive damage. I over farm by one and I'm going for the dragon claw. Dragon claw should be enough to take it out at this range. Heatmore is very glassy. Let's see what they do have in the back. They're taking their time. Oh no, and it's a Sunny Cherum. Okay, this is really not good. I'm going straight for the Blast Burn. Does get the shield. Well, it's really not good for them. At this point, I'm realizing 
that I can probably sack my Vile Plume. So I bring it in to tank the Weather Ball, and they actually stay in, and they're gonna try and farm me down. Unfortunately, I'm able to farm them down, and they have a Shadow Vile Plume in the back, and Charizard comes in, able to get to the Blast Burn. This is going to be more than enough to take care of their Shadow Vile Plume and to give us the game. So a very well played to my opponent there. My, I think if they had invested a second shield on Heatmore, they probably would have won the game. All right. Hopping into a Wigglytuff lead. This is a good matchup for Vileplume. As you can see, those Razor Leafs are really adding up and we're going straight for the Sludge Bomb to try and force a shield or to win the lead outright. And that just wins the lead outright. That's fantastic. Now, when they bring out Scrafty, we safe swap into Talonflame to try and draw out any fire counters they may have. They're not switching out. This is a big indicator that whatever they have in the back is also really weak to fire. We're fine with letting the foul play go through. We're gonna start with the flame charge and start ramping up our attacks. They're gonna need to throw here. Again, it's probably a power up punch. I, so I can let the power up punch go and we're able to farm down, and now I'm going to be able to Brave Bird the Clefable to get the shield. This is super important because Charizard does not beat Charmers in the two shield, only in the one shield. And so by being able to farm down there with our boosted attacks, then we're in a good position to get the first shield off of the Clefable. They needed to call the bait, so they do let it go. So that was an ABA double charm team, but our triple anti-charm team still able to make it work. All right, hopping into the next match here. Charizard lead. This is very, very tough. So I am going to switch into my own Charizard as I really don't have a good answer to a fire lead. That is a big weak spot for this team. Fire leads are going to be very tough. Going straight for the Dragon Claw and, the, and here they're actually going to come in with a Wigglytuff. At this point, the only reason they would bring in a Wigglytuff is if it is Charizard Double Charm. I land the Blast Burn and I'm able to win Switch Advantage. Huge mistake by my opponent allowing me to dictate Switch Advantage. Now I'm able to get Talonflame onto Charizard and I'm in a good spot because I can double shield this Talonflame and then I'll have Vile Plume set up on his second Charmer. I do go for the Flame Charge. They're probably going to shield just because they do want to get my second shield, but this is fine. I can shield this up, then I'm in a good position to farm down and start unloading those boosted flame charges onto Clefable. They do bring out Clefable, going straight for the flame charge. I do get the shield, and at this point, my attack is so boosted, I decide to stay in, go for another flame charge. This is boosting my attack again. If you get Talonflame going, it's absolutely absurd. And then we're able to farm down a Charizard with Talonflame and take the match. So Talonflame, if you can get a couple of those flame charges going, is absolutely deadly. All right, the mirror here and we bait out an Alamomola. So this is probably going to be their, this is probably going to be their anti-fire. I'm hoping they only have one. Going for a flame charge, gets the shield. And unfortunately they switched in a little soon. If they switch in late, you can typically get to a flame charge and a brave bird unfortunately was not able to do so. I am going to wait my clock and I'm going to come in with the vile plume. I do decide to shield this up. It is just a Psychic, so I could have survived it, which is unfortunate. And I'm going to attempt to farm down. They get to another one, which is absolutely brutal. I let this go. I can survive it, and we're able to farm down. And now, ooh, they have a Wigglytuff in the back. So they only had one answer to fire. As you can see, we were able to bait it out. And now Charizard is going to go on an absolute rampage. Wigglytuff can't even get to a charge move. It just gets so outpaced by Charizard. We're able to go for the back-to-back -back blast burns, takes it out, and now the Shadow Vile Plume comes out. Those Razor Leafs are actually doing quite a bit. I'm able to just get to a Dragon Claw right before I'm taken out, and that is enough to take the game. So as you can see there, this team does work quite well if they only have one answer to fire. Wigglytuff lead. Another really good spot for us to be in. All three of our Pokemon do very well. They bring out a Slowbro, and I'm just going to farm it all the way down. And it's at this point, they bring out Alamomola. And I'm like, oh no, 
They're running, du they're running a double water, charm double water. All three weak to vile plume. Somehow, despite having two fire answers, they're gonna lose this game because they, uh, yeah, this was not a. And the opponent concedes. They know they made a mistake. So somehow we were able to beat double water. Vile Plume Mirror, I do safe swap out of here after a bit. I do like to get a bit of energy on my Vile Plume before I go into my Talonflame. Bit of lag there, and they come out with Alamomola. Here, I do decide a different strategy. I just go straight up Brave Bird right away to give them less farm. As you can see, since my defense is lowered, I do get less farm this way. And now I'm gonna be able to come back in once my clock is up with Alamomola. Sorry, I'll come back in with Vile Plume against Alamomola. I'm able to tank a Psychic, and unfortunately, my health was too low there. So we are in a really tough spot, and now I'm going straight for a Dragon Claw. I'm hoping if I can take this out, this is their only fire counter. They come in with Electrode, they do have a counter, and I surrender the match. So that is one situation if they have two counters to a Fire Flying type. You're not going to win. And this person was running a deerling and quit. So <laughs> I wanted to include that because that was a very fun one. So all in all, how did the team do? Well, I did make a few mistakes in my battles. I went 12 and 13 with the team. So unfortunately, a losing record. The team did really well with what I was wanting it to do. I don't believe I lost to a charmer all day, and that was a really good feeling. However, I did lose to quite a lot else, especially Electrodes. This team really struggles with Electrodes as well as opposing Charizards because a lot of people are running Dragon Breath or Wing Attack, this team really struggles against. So would I recommend this team to be used in the Love Cup? If you're trying to gain rank, probably not. If you're trying to beat all Charmers, yes. This is the perfect team to beat all Charmers, but if you're trying to gain rank, I might look elsewhere, to be honest. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new and you're enjoying the content, definitely hit that subscribe button. It's free and it helps out the channel a bunch. And as well, thank you to our members here on YouTube. You guys do really help make the channel possible. So thank you guys so much. And I will see you in the next video.